Hi, welcome back to my channel. I have another video and this time we're looking at another old out of production Warhammer Fantasy box set. This one's not as old as usual from what I've mostly done. This is Volkmar the Grim on the War Altar of Sigmar and this was released at the start of 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy with the Empire release. I do think they were the first army out and this is the only kit I didn't buy at the start. I waited for some reason, never got around to it, and then bought it in a panic as soon as GW announced the Cities of Sigmar book, because the Cities of Sigmar included Empire Dwarves and Dark Elves, and I just felt this guy here is a big representation of Warhammer Fantasy. He's not going to survive the upcoming Purge. I, I was right. I don't think anything other than maybe there's still a warrior priest, but I don't think any of the Sigmar stuff is still around. It could be, but I don't think so. Anyways, doesn't matter. It's Games Workshop killing off old sets. It's what they do. They want to get new stuff out. Hopefully we see stuff like this come back for the old world. Um, because this, this is a really nice kit. You can just tell right off the bat by looking at the picture. This stuff is crisp. It's clean. And it's got a lot of character in the details. So, Volkmar the Grim, he's the Grand Theogenist of the Empire, meaning he's the head of the Sigmarite religion. Um, the, um, the wagon is this, basically it's this magic cart he rides around on. I think there might be more than one. I'm not certain on that, because I know this is sort of represented on it at all times. So I'm not sure if, and same with the horn, I'm not sure if um, there is, like the um, steam tanks, sort of like conflicting lore about how many exist. But at the very minimum, this one here is special because it has the horn of Sigamund and the, uh, the golden griffin. And then it comes with the Grand Theogenist. It's based off of the same wagon design that we saw with the two wizard wagons, the Luminarch and the... I have my book here. Just give me one second and I'll tell you what it's called. The Luminarch of Hish, I know, and the, uh, the Celestial Hurricanum. All three use the exact same wagon design. And it's really nice. You know, it's a little... I don't know. It's a little kind of like repetitive seeing multiple of the same wagon design on the board if I was to take all three. But at the same time, it's really nice. And I can't be upset when Games Workshop makes use of a good model. I mean, if this is what it took to get this out here to us was to use it three times so they didn't feel like they were wasting it, I'm okay with that. I think that, <coughs> sorry, having three sort of similar models with like different um, top de top decorations is okay because it adds variety and it's one thing that I don't like about Age of Sigmar is that they seem to have limited the ranges as much as possible and you'll see like the newest armies often have like a dozen or so kits available it's really good in the collector sense it's easy to get everything but at the same time the other type of collector like me who wants to have a nice varied army it does kind of put a lot of pressure on me to find ways to convert everything, especially in the monopose ranges that are harder to uh, make unique. Yet you have to kind of fight a lot more with the kits. So the other alternative option is to run it with an Arch Lector. The Arch Lector is the basic Lord choice option um, over a Warrior Priest, which is the hero, and the Grand Theogenist, he's the legendary hero the special character. It's it's a it's a really nice kit. Again, I don't know why I didn't buy it at the start. I had already spent so much money that probably was all it was because I did buy everything else. The instructions are very clear. They tell you everything you need to do to put this thing together and they fold out nice and neat double-sided and you get a cool piece of art I'm not going to go through all the instructions because you know it's just the instruction manual 
I'm sure you could look this up if you really wanted to see how to build one. But if somebody did want me to uh, just go back through this again, I could do that in like a little short video, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a cool piece of art. I don't know if it's in the book. I can't remember if that's one of them. But yeah. So I'm going to set that sprue aside for a moment. You get a cavalry or um, a chariot base and you get this sprue. <coughs> this is the shared sprue you would find in all three wagon options. It's a little library kind of thing. You get all your parts to make the wagon, the horses, details like that. And as you can see, the wagon itself is very detailed. Even the, um, the base of it, the interior and the bottom. So <coughs> someone who likes to paint is going to have a good time with this. There's very few places where there's not a lot of details. And here, where there is not any details, that's because that's where the, uh, the library books go. Torches and telescopes, purity seals, like they're space marines. GW loves their purity seals. Yeah, no, this, this is a cool wagon. I'm really glad we got several uses of it. Because it's one that... <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go get a drink here in a minute. It, it's a really nice piece on its own. Like I said, it's a little weird on its own without its um, its topper. But... Well, or to see multiple, that is. But it's, it's cool. It's one I like a lot. Nice pulpit and everything on there for the guy to talk from. And here it is. Every box would have come with a separate option. The Luminarch, the Celestium, and the War Altar options. This one here, you get the Golden Griffin, you get the characters on here, you get the Horn of Sigismund up here. Everything you need to make this piece into what it's supposed to be. Make sure you can see everything. I'm trying to make sure it's all in focus here at some point. Get a couple of head options. One for the basic dude. I'm going to go back this way. Yeah, so one for the basic dude in this, on this side. And one for Volkmar over here with that glorious mustache and with mutton chops. The wings are covered in details on both sides. Everything about this is like top notch. That's, oh, that just knocked over a bunch of knoblars. Oh well. Um, yeah, th this is a great kit that I think anybody who collects Empire for Warhammer Fantasy should try to get a, their hands on. I know it's very hard to get now. And that it's definitely one of the more expensive ones to get. But it's one that I think everybody... Pick these guys up real quick, sorry. It's one everybody who plays Empire can appreciate because he's an iconic character. And this is a really nice version. Before this, I did have the pewter from 5th edition or 4th edition. And it was ugly. Um, I never even painted it. I ran it a couple of times and thought, hey, this is really cool. This is powerful. Like during this edition, I ran the old pewter. That's probably why I didn't buy it because I had the pewter one and thought, oh, I got the pewter. What do I need the plastic for? The pewter one is ugly. It's just a flat wagon. Like it, it's like the wheels on a platform that you see here, but nothing here. And then he's standing on the front of it. There's two generic old style Imperial horses. And he's just like standing like he's mid jumping jack. And, and this thing's doing the exact same thing. So I guess it's more like the griffin is statued as doing a jumping jack and he's copying the statue. And it just looks absurd and it's boring. And I'm going to get crucified for that comment and that, that opinion, I'm sure, by some of the older fans. But 
it's just it did not speak to me i think i bought it simply to comp to have the option to run him at some point and i don't know i don't know what maybe takes what made me take so long before i bought this guy because he's just a better representation of him in, in my opinion just the sculpt for Volkmar uh, really sells how great this is to me. And, just as a special bonus, if I ever do get my hands on a second set, all I want is this. Because I want to buy another steam tank and attach this to it with the stairs going up the back and the pulpit on top. Because in the Warhammer Online game from like, oh my god, almost 15 years ago, I think, 12 to Oh, it's got to be more than that. I think it came out in like 2008 anyways. A long time ago, they put out a game like World of Warcraft, but for Warhammer, if you don't know. And there was this, this static piece of terrain in it. And it was a steam tank with like this thing on the back of it. And it was like the war altar on a tank. And I want to remake that, but I'm not going to waste this opportunity to have this model. Um, the only reason I would do that... Only, sorry, the only way I'll do that is if I can figure out a way to easily magnetize that so it's not, like, clicking off. Although, at the same time, just by looking at that, maybe I should magnetize it anyways, just for storage and transportation. Because, man, the more I look at that, that thing is, like, 10 inches tall. Yeah, I might have to magnetize that anyways. That's just me thinking to myself. Um, anyways, if that does happen, I'll also show off how I made steam tank war altar from warhammer online so we'll see if that happens uh thanks very much for your time if you have any thoughts or comments please put them in the comments for me and i'll take a look at them and <clears throat> if you want me to do something on the channel i'll do my best to make that happen and i just want to thank everybody who has subscribed in the last little bit um i've been really only picking this up for the past few months and appreciate everybody who's kind of stuck with me and i didn't think i'd get this far so you know even though it's only like 23 or 24 subs that's about 20 more than i thought i'd ever get so thanks very much for uh coming along with me and have yourselves a great day